planet Holon, straddling the line between the red galactic karmic Neptune memory and red solar prophetic Uranus navigation zones on the Arabian Peninsula, not far from the Red Sea, you will find the Earth's most singular power point and interplanetary memory node, the Kaaba in Mecca. What is the source of this magnetic interplanetary memory attractor? If we look up, past the red galactic karmic Neptune zone, we come to the generator of the red chromatic sequence galactic karmic Maldek, the destroyed planet. Here lies the root and cause of the Kaaba's potent drawing power. The memories of Maldek, now the asteroid belt, are transmitted in a downward flow to the galactic karmic memory zone, the hub of the old world, to be condensed into a supremely concentrated point in Mecca. Just beyond Mecca is the Red Sea, and on the other side of the Red Sea is the next sequence of the chromatic red zone, the solar prophetic Uranus navigation zone. From the interplanetary vantage point, Uranus is Earth's biotelepathic twin and the object of the evolutionary advancement of the human once the time tunnels are opened. The migrations of spirit generated in Maldek, its memory stored in Neptune to be focalized in the Kaaba, are finally released as a time travel navigation to Uranus. In this interplanetary saga, the terrestrial focus is the Kaaba. Let us examine the story behind this singular geomantic site. Every day, more than one billion humans bow five times in prayer to one single point on the surface of the Earth, the Kaaba in Mecca. Every year, more than one million Muslims make a pilgrimage, al Hajj, in mass to this point in Saudi Arabia, a shrine called the Kaaba, or the Ziblack Stone, some say dark red. This magnetic object with five billion prayers a day literally directed to it. There is no other phenomenon that compares with this on Earth. Why is this so, and what does it mean for the destiny of our planet? The Kaaba functions as the Qibla, the direction a Muslim faces while praying. Muslims consciously orient themselves at five specific times per day to the Kaaba, a 35 times 40 times 50 feet cube shaped structure with a 12 inch diameter black oval stone set within its northeastern corner. It is amazing to consider the number of people directing their energy and prayers to that particular point. Those millions who make the pilgrimage at Hajj or on the road to Mecca circumambulate seven times around the shrine. Why is it that in this remote place in the desert of Saudi Arabia, the Kaaba is the basis or object of the most synchronized form of spiritual practice on the planet? Think about the numbers. Each pilgrim that visits the Kaaba circumambulates the stone seven times. Five times a day, approximately 1.3 billion Muslims make Salat prayers in the conscious orientation toward the Kaaba. That is more than 6 billion prayers a day directed to one specific place. This is thus distinguished from any other place on earth. This is often spoken of but rarely explained. Kaaba is derived from the Arabic word Kab which means cube. The Kaaba is literally the house of the cube and the main shrine of all of Islam. The heart and purpose of the Kaaba lies in its eastern corner that contains a small stone. This mysterious black stone is the reason for the shrine of the Kaaba or cube. Why is it that a cube enshrines the stone? What is the stone? Some scholars have suggested that the stone is a meteorite fallen to earth. One Islamic tradition suggests that the black stone fell from heaven to a place near the Red Sea during the time of Adam and Eve. 
This stone traces back to Abraham, who was sent by God on a journey through Arabia with Hagar, the mother of his second son, Ishmael. Abraham had originally set off from Ur, near present-day Baghdad. He made the journey south, into the Arabian Peninsula, where he found the black stone. The rare stone is said to have a celestial origin. It was originally an angel, as the story goes. God appointed the guardian angel to Adam, an angel of knowledge. At the beginning of creation, God asked all beings in the universe to take a vow before incarnation that they would remember him after their incarnation to this planet. This vow of remembrance was placed in the heart of every being. God then asked the angel to swallow the declaration so that this knowledge would be inside of him. This was to ensure that no being could say that they had no knowledge of God. This was the angel of Adam's knowledge. When Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan to eat from the forbidden tree, he promised them that they would possess all knowledge of the entire universe. The tree of knowledge was meant for Adam and Eve, but only at the right time. Satan tempted them to eat of this tree prematurely, and at that moment, when Adam forgot, the angel was turned to a precious white stone. Adam and Eve were then sent to earth. When Adam fell to earth, he awoke, so it is said, in Ceylon. Nearby he saw a stone and heard it speak. Do you remember who I am before Satan made you forget? Then the angel Gabriel appeared to Adam with the message to carry the stone until he found the place that is the replica of the house above the seventh heaven, or the house of universal intelligence, called Al-Bayt ul-Mamur. Adam finally carried the stone to where Mecca is today, and he built the house with that stone in place. Several cycles later, Abraham was guided to find the stone. When he found it, it was now black, covered with the immaculated sins and corruption of humanity. Abraham and his son Ishmael retrieved the stone and placed it in the house that they had built for it. This was the second Kaaba. The first was built by Adam. The pillar of that stone connects to the palace of universal intelligence. This is the place where Muhammad went on his night journey, the ascent to the seventh heaven, where he saw 70,000 angels who every seven days make a complete circumambulation around this house, the Al-Bayt ul-Mamur, Allah's house. This is the model or template of the earthly Kaaba. This is where Muhammad received the instructions for the five daily Salat prayers. Muhammad established historical Islam and was the last of the three messengers of the awakening, preceded by Buddha and Jesus. He completed his mission on earth in the second year of Pakalvotan's cycle of power. When Muhammad's soul ascended, June 8, 632, Islam split into two schools, Shiite and Sunnah. Shiite refers to the belief in the succession of the Imams, beginning with Muhammad's nephew, Ali. Sunnah refers to the tradition of following the teachings and sayings of the life of Muhammad. The whole of Islamic law, called the Sharia, was derived primarily from the Quran and Sunnah texts. Toward the end of the 8th century, but still during the classic period of the Mayan civilization in the New World, the Shiites split into two schools, the Ismailite tradition with seven Imams and the twelfth Imam school. By the time of Muhammad, the Kaaba built by Abraham and Ishmael was filled with 360 idols, some say 365. 
One story tells that when Muhammad first saw the Kaaba stone, tears fell from his eyes and he touched and kissed its surface. Muhammad was first directed to purify the Kaaba, making him the third, following Adam and Abraham, to purify and rebuild the Kaaba in its present form. Muhammad himself placed the stone in the place where it is now enshrined. This telling of the story of the stone points to a direct line of prophetic transmission from Adam to Abraham to Muhammad, a lineage that runs from the first man and prophet, Adam, to the seal of the prophets, Muhammad. In the Kabbalistic tradition, the original Adam was Adam Kadmon, the Red Adam. In the interplanetary cosmology, this Red Adam originated on Maldek, place of the original Garden of Eden. The sacred stone was a remnant from Maldek that fell to earth after the planet was destroyed. In this regard, the stone signifies a memorial fragment of the catastrophe of Maldek, the karma of which everyone on earth is now living out. Since that stone was originally the angel of knowledge, when Muslim pilgrims visit that stone, they are going to the point that holds the original vow of remembrance that God placed in their heart before their incarnation. When they make a pilgrimage to the stone, they are redeeming what Adam forgot when he was cast out from paradise. So the rite of touching the stone becomes a recapitulative and redemptive cosmology. This particular telling of the story of the Kaaba comes from the Persian mystic Qadi Sai Kumi, who lived a 52-year cycle, 1639 to 1691, and wrote about the history of the Black Stone, along with numerous chronologies and histories of the Kaaba. Kumi was a Shiite Muslim and a believer of the 12th Imam in the lineage of Muhammad. The symbology of the 12th Imam is woven into the cosmology of the Black Stone. But it is not just the stone that is significant, but also the Kaaba itself, the cube in which it is enshrined. What is the origin of the cube? The 8th Imam said that divine religion will never perish as long as the Kaaba endures. This is because the Kaaba contains the stone that extends back to the original creation, and that stone is believed to have originally been an angel. The cube has six sides, eight corners, and twelve edges. According to Shiite cosmology, the twelve edges represent the twelve Imams. The eight corners are the eight supports of the throne, and the six sides are the six days of creation. Quranic cosmology says that on the day of resurrection, eight angels will support the throne, an angel at each side of the eight corners. On the day of resurrection, the twelfth Imam will reveal himself, and the cube will be manifest spiritually. Many Shiite Muslims are awaiting the return of the twelfth Imam, the final or the Mahdi, who is believed to be in occultation until the end of time. The Imams trace their descent from Ali, the nephew of Muhammad who was the first Imam. The twelfth Imam remains hidden or occulted until the day of resurrection. His occultation occurred in AD 873, AH 260. AH refers to after Hijira. There is some echo of the occulted element in the story of Joseph in the Quran. Joseph is the twelfth son with eleven brothers. In the most significant part of his story, Joseph remains occulted from his brothers and family until the predestined moment when he reveals himself. Also Joseph is the title of Surah 12 of the Quran. Twelve is the number of the temple, 
the highest complex number of 13 that consists of multiples 2, 3, 4 and 6. It is a complex harmonic that creates a stasis. This is why plus 1 is 13, the frequency of the circulation of cosmic time. The tradition of the Imams is the succession and blood lineage of Muhammad. However, all of Muhammad's sons died. Only his daughter Fatima remained. At this time, females were not appointed to this role, so the succession fell to Muhammad's nephew, Ali. Ali was one of the first people to embrace Islam and was very close to Muhammad. Ali was considered the first Imam in this tradition. In the tradition of the twelve Imams, plus one, thirteen, is Fatima, the female principal, while the fourteen is Muhammad. In that tradition, they say that each Imam comes to the world bearing four different kinds of light, and each light has seven degrees, equaling twenty-eight. According to the Shiite tradition, if it were not for the occulted twelfth Imam, the world would fall apart. This is due to the belief that the twelfth Imam holds the axis of the world. This is an interesting point to consider in light of the circumpolar rainbow bridge. Seen symbolically, it is this occult spiritual knowledge that maintains the world order. Without the role of the Imams in maintaining the spiritual axis of our world, there would be absolute chaos and the world would have been destroyed a long time ago. This information is also interesting in light of a potential pole shift. In the tradition of the twelve Imams, eleven are known and one is in occultation. No name is given to this one, though he is believed to have been born in 869 Christian calendar on the day 15 Shaban the eighth moon of the lunar calendar. Note that in the Sunnah tradition the date 15 Kaban marks the day when Muhammad supposedly presents the record of all births and deaths that were to occur in the next year. The twelfth Imam appeared early during the eleventh Bakhtun of the Holy Wars, AD 830 to 1224. For this reason, the twelfth Imam went into occultation and supposedly remains alive at least in the fourth dimension, until the end of time. It is believed that he will appear as the Mahdi, or the manifestation of the twelfth Imam, to close the Eon. The cube is derived from the foundation of the plan of the throne of God as a two-dimensional square made three-dimensional into a cube. The cube represents the form of self-perfection, making the Qibla of the Kaaba the center of the cosmos. The cube maintains symmetrical perfection and remains constant throughout the whole scales. It always has six sides that are equidistant from an invisible center point. The Kaaba is a perfect geomantic anchor that encompasses a complete cosmology. It is also a template or model of the potential of the universal cube as a holder or carrier of different systems of knowledge. The four corners of the Kaaba represent the four prophets, Moses, Abraham, Jesus and Noah. In the Shiite tradition on the four upper corners, there is Muhammad followed by the first three Imams. There are stones placed at each corner, representing physical places on earth, with the most significant one being the black stone. Above the black stone is the place of universal intelligence, and above the other three corners are the universal soul, nature and matter. There is a whole cosmology of the universal cube, and the cube of the universe. The symbolism of the cube relates to the human going toward the self-perfection of his or her own divine nature, the yoga of self-perfection. In this sense, the cube is eternal, 
it has no history. The eternal cube represents the divine religion that will never perish as long as the temple of the Kaaba endures, as prophesied by the eighth Imam. In this sense, the cube signifies a structure of fourth dimensional intelligence that is projected into our mind that symbolically epitomizes our journey to self-perfection. Its prototype is the Al-Bayt ul-Mamur, the house of Allah, above the seventh heaven. As the form of the Al-Bayt ul-Mamur, the cube correlates to systems of divine knowledge. For example, the cube with its eight opposite corners can represent the eight triplets of the I Ching. The time triplet is at the upper left with the moon triplet, and the space triplet is at the upper right with the sun triplet. The other four corners represent the sensible world, thunder, mountain, stillness, lake and wind. These eight triplets, in all of their permutations, create the 64 codons. The six lines of the codon also fit the six sides of the cube in a process called cubing the codon. The origin of the cube, Kaaba, goes back to the template of the original throne of God. This throne is seen in a form like a diamond or a square, much like the Hunabku 21 and the four gates of light, red, green, yellow and white. These are the colors of the four gates of light of the throne of God. It is divided into two parts, beginning and esoteric, and ending of things and exoteric. The throne of God manifests at the beginning and end. Exoteric is revealed knowledge and esoteric is hidden knowledge. These four gates of light form a square. When this square is projected, it forms a foundation of the cube. The four pillars of the cube create an upper part that signifies the fourth dimensional world, the supersensible, while the lower part of the cube is the sensible realm signifying the third dimensional world. There are eight supports to the throne. The cube has eight corners which signify these supports. As the visual form of the law of time, the cube first appeared to Valumbotan as a galactic time atom cube composed of four nested tetrahedra, red, white, blue and yellow. Within this tetrahedra there is a perfectly blue corner where the three blues meet, and a perfect red corner where the three reds meet, and likewise for the white and yellow. These are similar to the light gates of the throne. Not long after the time atom cube revealed itself, came the perception of the imploded cube containing three internal planes, plane of mind, plane of will, and plane of spirit. This time atom cube was perceived as an explosion of these planes. This occurred on Resonant 15, 24th of January 1991. The cube has six sides, top and bottom, left and right, and front and back. The top and bottom planes are created by the horizontal plane that cuts across the center. The two sides, left and right, are created from a plane at the center that is perpendicular to the horizontal plane. The front and back sides are created by another plane perpendicular to the plane that creates the left and right sides. The locus of consciousness, or the center of creation, is at the center where these three planes meet, plane of mind, top and bottom, plane of will, left and right, and plane of spirit, front and back. Number is a dimension unto itself. Six is actually the value of the cube. The plane of mind is space, the plane of spirit is time, the plane of will is number, and the point at the center is the plane of transcendence, which is the throne of God. Each of the planes has two sides, for a total of six sides of the cube. Space represents matter, Time represents energy, number represents measure, cube represents consciousness, 
Space becomes quantity measure, time becomes telepathy. Each plane is one dimension, corresponding to the six dimensions of consciousness and the six days of creation. So the cube is the perfect form of creation and is the manifestation of the base triplet, which is the same as the binary triplet. The cube has six sides and eight vertices, which is the galactic harmonic or the octave. Six plus the center point is zero or seven, the throne of God. If you add the eight vertices plus the one in the center you get nine. Each plane or face has four edges, for a total of twelve. So there are twelve edges, six faces and one center point, which totals nineteen. The twelve edges plus one center equals thirteen. The cube is fundamentally a foundation of knowledge. The psychomythic drama of Adam is the drama of knowledge. Adam desired knowledge. Satan said, you can have it all now. Then came the fall and the saga of history. A process has unfolded throughout history of determining and defining what knowledge is and what is valid knowledge. Today, information is mistaken for knowledge. This is so much information that we do not know what to do with it. As a result, there is little understanding as to what genuine knowledge is. As a system of knowledge, the six sides of the cube correspond to the six darshans, or points of view, of the Vedic system, where the foundation, bottom, darshan is called Samkhya, the mathematical, logical or cosmological point of view. The top corresponds to Vedanta, the metaphysical non-dual point of view. The plane of mind consists of Vedanta above and Samkhya below. The plane of will corresponds to Visheka, the scientific naturalistic point of view right side and Niyaya, logic or dialectical point of view, left side. In the plane of spirit, the back side is yoga or supersensible point of view, and the front side is Mimansa, the theological point of view. This is how the Vedic system corresponds to the three planes and six faces of the cube. We can define a whole system of knowledge, whether it is the Vedic system or the Yiching system, through the intrinsic metaphysics or logics of the cube. Meditation on the cube reveals its structure as a manifestation of primal knowledge. It is what is before and after the realm of conceptualization. It is the primal self-perfection, and yet it is the self-perfection that we all aspire to. It is the Alpha and Omega of the projection of the supermental into the domain of the discriminating mind. This is the final metaphor of the goal of our self-perfection where the final goal has been equalized. The cube is a metaphor of our own perfection and transcendence. It is the projection of a supermental structure of knowledge into the realm of our discriminating mind and awareness. Through illuminating projection into our mental layers, the angel of knowledge implants structures of intelligence into our mind and intellect. When we come to know something we recognize, or recognize, a structure that conforms to what has already been planted in the mind. The cube defines the perfection of the law of time. The 16-year cube of the law derived from the 16 cube positions of days 7 to 22 in the Telectonon define the matrix cube of time. Within the matrix cube of time are the 64 codons in each of the 13 permutations to create an 832-week cycle, 
summarized as a higher dimensional time cube constructed over a 16 year cycle of time. The final supermental projection of the cube is the 441 matrix, Hunapku 21, which creates the cube of 21 cubed, or 9261, written as 1.3.3.1 in vigesimal code. This 441 cube matrix contains a basic grammar of telepathy condensed into a set of 441 numbers, the constituent syllables or mathematical mantras. These 441 frequencies constitute the resonant building blocks of the second creation. All of the previous accumulations of knowledge, whether Islamic, Vedic, Taoist, etc., are contained within the matrix and cube structure of the 441, 1.3.3.1. 1 because it is literally a supermental projection, the 441 cube matrix structure is the basis of a purely mathematical form of knowledge. In order to attain perfection, we have to enlarge our consciousness to encompass a larger domain of meaning, one that transcends verbal language. According to the effort we make to expand our consciousness, the divine force will respond, making us superconscious, supermental, superhuman entities. This is the actual means of transformation. One way to expand our consciousness is to understand the way different number matrices operate and inform us. To realize this, we follow a disciplined process, such as yoga, in order to transcend or transform the lower self into the higher self. Keeping our mind focused on the highest outcome, we displace our ego with higher thought forms by shedding the doubts and anxieties of the lower mind, which is beset with questions and worries. The 441 cube is the final manifestation of this supermental cube projection. The structure of the meaning of the cube, from the point of view of Adam and the Angel of Knowledge, is a universal experience where we enter the vortex that unifies with universal intelligence. This structure of meaning is similar to the system of the Holomind Perceiver with its four intergalactic channels. These are precisely like the four pillars of the cube, cosmic creation, cosmic ascension, cosmic synchronization and cosmic cube, universal matter, universal soul, universal nature and universal intelligence. Everything is brought into the present so that we are now being given a structure for organizing and giving a new meaning to our knowledge. This structure helps us organize the different aspects or facets of knowledge scientific, yogic, theosophical, mathematical, aesthetic, philosophical, etc. The different levels of knowledge converge to create a cubic structure. Everything is inclusive. A cube has six sides. The point in the center is the seventh. Eight corners. The point in the center is the ninth. And twelve edges. The point in the center is the thirteenth. The fundamental number cosmologies of the even numbers of 6, 8 and 12 create the 26, 13 times 2. The dimension of time is contained in the numbers 7, 9 and 13. They create the cosmology of the cosmic constant 7 plus 9 plus 13 equals 29. Even numbers represent space. Odd numbers represent time. All possibilities of thought and knowledge are condensed into this cosmology and reformulated as fundamental numerical frequencies existing in a cosmology of mathematical meaning.
seven is the key number of the interval of lost time in eternity. In the tradition of the Ishmaelites, there were no more than seven Imams. The mystical numerology accords with the law of time and the key numbers of the synchronic order. Similarly, the Sakyamuni Buddha who was born at the middle point of the seventh Bactun of the thirteen Bactun cycle was supposedly the seventh of the Buddhas born in this world system during this great superkalpa of time. After him there were the twenty-eight enlightened masters in succession from Mahakasyapa to Bodhidharma. This supermental projection into our consciousness and our discriminating awareness is meant to be meditated on and studied in order to discover its hidden matrices. This is the governing structure of the multidimensional universe. The opposite of the cube is the sphere. The sphere has no corners or edges. It is absolute. It is the light universe. From the light universe is projected the existential universe. The perfection of the existential universe is synthesized by the cube. This is why Adam, who fell from the heavenly sphere, built the first shrine to God in the form of a cube, the existential universe. Pakalvotan in his tomb held a jade sphere in his right hand and a jade cube in his left hand. This represented the absolute light universe and the absolute of the relative. Within the sphere, the cube is inscribed. There is a hypothetical sphere around the cube as well as a hypothetical sphere at the center of the cube. One is implicit in the other and the two go together to define each other. In the cube and Kaaba are the keys to the temple of universal religion and remembrance, you are. The stone symbolizes remembrance of our cosmic origins and holds the memory of our capacity for self-perfection. This is also the purpose of all yogic systems.